Welcome to this video year 8, the purpose of which is to get you started with the HTML and CSS unit. The things we're going to be doing in this video and the steps that you need to follow are covered at the top of your workbook in the introduction task. So we're going to get you signed into GitHub and also into Code Academy. And it's very possible there might be a bit of a hitch signing into these in school. Both of these sites are a little bit protective if they seem to be getting a lot of accesses from one particular location on the internet, like a school for example. So don't worry if either of these stages need to be finished off at home, it's just a case of signing up and accepting the verification email that will come through to your school email account. But once you're signed up to Code Academy, you can start looking through the first couple of HTML sections. And as you meet new terms, we've got a little space for you to note down things that you find and keep a record of your knowledge. So first things first then, GitHub. So what you're looking for is github.com. And this provides a platform in which code sandbox that we're going to be using for our HTML will sit. So you need an account on GitHub in order to sign into code sandbox. So we're not going to be here very long just to sign up. So let's go and do that. So the first thing to do is to put your school email address in. Now, obviously I can't use this again, so I'm going to have to use a fake address. So here's an email address that will vanish a few seconds after I finish using it. So tap in a password So enter a username that you'll remember. This could be a gamer tag, for example, you have. It needs to be unique, so no one else on the site has already used it, but it can be essentially anything. Okay, but you can't use this because I've already used it. If you really want lots of spam emails from GitHub, then put Y in, otherwise select N. And then the verification process, prove that you're a human. It appears I've convinced them, and then create the account. They'll send you an email, so go and check your school email address and put your code in. And then just click on random things to complete your login. Okay, so the next thing is Code Academy, codeacademy.com, and you can sign into Code Academy using your email address as well. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Okay, click to explore on your own, and you can find the free HTML and CSS course up here at the top, and then click Learn HTML and start. Read the info on the left, code section on the right, and as you learn how to add content to a web page, your web page will appear over here on the right hand side. And here I've switched to my own account, where I'm already quite far through the course. And you'll see here the structure of HTML. This is what you're learning. The red items here are called tags. And you'll see the plain text in white matches up with what's on the web page. But if you'll notice this little bit up here that's in italics, or this little bit here that's in bold, you'll actually notice that that text is surrounded by red tags. This one is an EM tag, or emphasis. And that puts the text in italics. And least concern is surrounded by strong tags. And that basically means bold. And so on to Code Sandbox, which is a sandbox for code. A sandbox being something you can just play around in. So you're looking for codesandbox.io. And this site has a very familiar theme. It's very similar to GitHub. Well, we're going to be using GitHub to sign in. So when you hit the sign in page, click on sign in with GitHub. And if you're not currently signed into GitHub, then you'll need to actually do the sign in. But if you've recently accessed GitHub on the same browser, it will actually remember your login. And all you've got to do is to click the all green authorize button to allow Code Sandbox to use your GitHub account. Okay, just finish off your sign in with the final few details and you're in. Now this is the home page, doesn't have anything particularly useful on it. Now this button here obviously is how you can create a new sandbox, but we're not going to do that. We want to use an existing template. So in the past, we've provided students with a basic web page to adjust as files, which they used on the computer. But Code Sandbox has made things a lot easier. So we've got a link on the OneNote. This will be the main HTML CSS page in the content library on your notebook. If you click on the link, this will load the template using your account. This template is made up of two pages, an index page and a second page called page two. It also contains a file called styles.css, which we'll come to in a few minutes. Package.json has to stay there, but doesn't really matter, just ignore. Now this page is actually hosted by my account, so you can't edit it yourself. In order to edit it, you need to what we call fork yourself a copy. Now you may find a button called fork up here at the top, but if you can't find it, pop to the menu, top left, go to the file menu, and just under halfway down, you'll see fork sandbox. And this basically means make your own copy. And so now my account has its own copy of this template. Now you can change the text and fiddle around with this as much as you like. So this text, this is the title, you'll see is the title here at the top. I can change that to whatever I want and the text will automatically change. You'll see the main text down here at the bottom and this strange looking tag here, BR, means break. It's a line break. 
You'll notice if I hover over a tag, it actually explains what that tag is, but I can also copy and paste. So two line breaks gives you a gap line. So I could, for example, put two more line breaks after second page, and that will space the page out a bit nicer. Now you should find in your OneNote a page called HTML CSS Help. And this provides you with a bit of an explanation about what the different tags are. And also some quick things you can copy and paste to do things like adding images and adding links. This tag, for example, provides what we call a hypertext reference or a web link to the BBC News page. So I can copy this and paste this directly onto my web page. Now you notice the text has just appeared immediately after the page two. So a couple more line breaks might be useful. Now this first link takes me to page two. There's another link on page two that takes me back to the first page. But within this mini browser, it won't let me go to the BBC News site. But you'll notice this web link that's at the top of the web page preview here. If I copy that link and add that into a new blank tab, you'll notice it takes me to my web page and that link will work. So the link at the top of your code sandbox is a live web link. So if I save a picture to my My Work folder, I can press this little up arrow just above my list of files, upload the picture that I've just saved, and then I can use the image code from the OneNote and paste that onto my page. Now you'll immediately see an error has occurred because the name of the picture here is wrong. I need to make sure that what's inside these quotation marks is exactly the same as the name of the picture here. A handy hint is to right click rename and copy the exact name of the file and then paste that inside the quotation marks. Now this particular image tag has a height and a width specified 300 by 250 but I don't actually need both. I can decide which one is most important. If for example I didn't really want the width to be a particular size but I did want the height to be only 50 pixels, 50 dots, then I can specify height equals 50 and the logo will appear that size. I can even take that image tag, cut it and replace the text BBC News homepage with the image. So here's the full browser version of that page and there is my image. Click on that takes me to the BBC News page. One thing you may have noticed is that this Hello Year 8 is a different size text to the ordinary writing, but there doesn't seem, appear to be anything saying what size text that should be. It's because the title and the paragraph are actually defined in the style sheet, styles.css. If I open this up, you can actually see title and paragraph have definitions. So for example, the background color is set to white. But if I carefully hover over that colour, I can change the colour to any colour I want. For example, a light green. You'll notice, by the way, that hexadecimal is used to define the colour. Red, green and blue. So wherever I use a title tag now, the background colour will be green. Notice the paragraph has an item called margin left, which if I increase it from 40 to 80, has an immediate effect on the web page. Let's change it to 180, even further over. So this is something else you can play around with. So our HTML help page gives you a few tags you can try, but then gives you a link to the W3Schools site. As well as Code Academy, W3Schools is a really, really good place to just go in and have a little bit of a look at different examples of bits of HTML code to try out, including how CSS works. Each of the code examples gives you the opportunity to try it yourself, so you can try out the code and see what it does. And it really is a very comprehensive guide for you to play around and mess around. Now the aim of this unit is to give you the opportunity to try and create a web page of your own, on your own topic. And we'll be providing an example of that to have a little look at later on. But the first couple of lessons really is about playing around, messing around, trying out tags, see what they do. You can't break anything. Worst case scenario, you can go back to the link and fork a new copy of the template. So the very best of luck with playing, the more you explore, the more you'll learn. Good luck.